father! Give me strength! Hi guys, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're going to go through the Dark Deity Class Overview Part 1, which is going to be Warrior. Classes in Dark Deity is split up into six different trees, with the Ranger, Warrior, Cleric, and Mage available during the first mission, and then the Rogue and Adept coming shortly thereafter. Today we're going to go through a pretty comprehensive guide on everything to do with the Warrior class, what you can expect from using Warrior characters in Dark Deity, where you can take them, their stats and skills, pretty much all the information you need to plan a Warrior character accordingly. Naturally, if you want to avoid spoiling the class unlocks or the characters that are available later in the game, you should probably turn back now because there's going to be spoilers aplenty from here on in. Warriors fill the typical RPG role in Dark Deity of being your frontliners. They're great at taking hits, and you should be using them to bait in enemies that could potentially dish out big chunks of damage and do it in return to them. They suit best in being the thick of the fight, regardless of which class route you take them, and benefit highly from aspects that shore up their weaknesses, speed, accuracy, and, and the like. We're going to start with the stats and abilities of the base class in Warrior, then the stats and abilities of each promotion option at level 10, then finally the stats and abilities of the final promotion at level 30. The base class is called Warrior. The damage type for Warrior is Slashing, the armor type is Plate, they have a 5 movement range, they have a 1 attack range, and the class skill that you'll get for being a warrior is you can push, which means you move an adjacent ally one space away. Then at level 10 you have 4 options to promote your warrior. The first being knight, and their damage type is also slashing. Their armor type changes to chain, they gain an additional movement range at 6. They still have the same attack range at 1, the melee range. Then they gain their two class skills for being a knight. The first is power is increased by 9% for every adjacent ally, and the second is HP is increased by 20%. It's a pretty big chunk. The second option you have for your level 10 promotions is Barbarian. Your damage type will change to Cleaving, your armor type will change to Leather, you'll still get that extra movement range taking up to 6, your attack will stay at 1 range, and the class skills for Barbarian are that your damage ignores 20% of defense and you get an extra range on your push, meaning you can push your ally an extra slot. The third option for your level 10 promotions is Dragoon. The damage type if you select Dragoon will change to Piercing, you will get Chain Armor and you'll actually gain 2 extra movement range, you'll get bumped up to 7. Attack range stays at 1, still a melee unit. The two class skills for Dragoon are gain 4% crit for each tile that you've moved this turn. Works well with the extra movement range you have, picking up a mounted class. And the second is crit is increased by 20% of dodge. So whatever your dodge is, you get 20% extra crit chance based on that. Your last option for level 10 promotions is Defender. Your damage type for Defender will be slashing, but you gain the armor type in plate, your movement range actually doesn't improve at level 10 if you pick Defender, it'll stay at 5, one of the lower. Attack range is still 1, you get melee all the way through your level 10 promotions. The first class skill for the Defender is Adjacent Allies will get plus 20 defense, and the second is Advanced Stats are increased by 15% of defense. If you get lucky with rolls on defense, as you should if you select Defender, you have a high chance of getting defense rolls. This is going to add up really fast and make your starting warriors and even warriors in the late game really beefy, really strong, really potent, just great all-rounders. Defender makes really great all-rounders if you take it as your first class. Then once you hit level 30, you get again get four options for your promotion. The first being champion. Your damage type as a champion will be slashing. The armor type is chain. You will get a six movement range. The attack range is still only one, still a melee class if you go champion. The first class skill cannot double, but true speed adds to power. This means that all of your true speed just gets dealt as damage. You won't double, but you'll be one-shotting a lot of things. The second is probably one of the weaker class skills. It's the push range plus one, but it needs something to offset how powerful the other is in the true speed adds to power. Your second option for level 30 promotions as a warrior is Berserker. 
Berserkers keep their cleaving damage type, they still have armor leather, you have a 6 movement range, and your attack range is still 1. The first class still for but Berserker is, power is increased up to 75% as health lowers. So if you go something with really defensive statistics and chances in your first, and then move over to Berserker in your second promotion, you can have really high HP, but then gain a lot of power as it lowers through this car skill. The second class skill for Berserker, chance to attack again, is increased by enemies missing health, so your chance to double, it improves the lower the enemy's health is. Your third option for the level 30 promotions as a warrior is Dragon Knight, probably one of the better sprites in the game, it looks quite cool. The damage type for Dragon Knight depends on whether you're using, uh, you have melee and magic options as a Dragon Knight. Your damage type for melee will be piercing and for the magic it's fire. Your armor type will be chain uh, and your movement range gets bumped up to an enormous 9. You have 9 movement range as a, as a Dragon Knight. The attack range changes a little bit too, so you have a, ta a 1 attack range for melee um, and then the potential to do up to 2 with your magic. The first class skill, as you've probably guessed, is can use fire magic. So that makes your power and balance weapons into fire. And the second, your warrior is probably not going to have any magic stats. It makes your magic equal to whatever your strength stat is, plus 5. So you don't get gimped with really weak fire attacks for going with Dragon Knight. Your last option for playing a warrior is Sentinel. That's your level 30 option, your last one. The damage type for Sentinel is slashing, the armor will remain plate if you've chosen plate previously, but it'll change the plate if you haven't. You get, finally, if you're going Defender, an extra movement range, you get up to 6 with Sentinel, attack range is still only 1. The first class skill, adjacent allies gain 20% of this unit's defense. If you went Defender into Sentinel, you're getting a lot of defense, and this means you can spread it around a lot. The second is... Allies gain an additional 10% power, so Sentinel really is that um, support tank type class. You just want them to be around and on top of your other units, taking damage and buffing those around. Them. So those are your options class-wise. For characters, well, Irving's a warrior and he's the first character you get, so you're going to have experience with warriors pretty much just at the start of the game. Irving's default skill is nearby allies gain 5 XP whenever Irving defeats an enemy. Doesn't sound like a lot, but throughout the game, you know, it adds up, it adds up. The second is Benji, and his default skill is crit chance increased by 0.33 for every unit on the map that Benji outlevels. So if you have your Benji a little bit higher than everyone else, you're going to be dealing a lot of crits, and he'll snowball. Your third option is Helena, and her default skill is Fortitude increased by 25%. Fenton is next, and his default skill is Damage increased by 20% of level. So, you get Fenton at a pretty high level to start with, and this ramps up as you play through the game. It can be really potent as soon as you get him. Lastly, Alexa, her default skill is Damage increased by Tiles move this turn. If you spec Alexa Dragoon into Dragonite, that default skill comes into play a lot. Anyway, that's going to wrap things up for our class overview of Warrior. If you've had particular success with specking a character down a certain class line, grabbing specific level 10 and level 30 class skills, or had success experimenting with a certain aspect, we'd love to hear about your success or, or your failure, as it might be, on the MGN.GG blog, our YouTube channel, of course, the new Twitter, at MGN underscore TV, and our new Discord. I'm going to put links for all of these in the description of the video overview. Thanks so much for checking out our overview of the Warrior class in Dark Deity.